we've been contacted by a customer this morning. Um, the temperatures are slow on the rise in springtime. It's a time when you've got to take, um, you've got to observe your koi carefully and um, watch for any unusual behaviour. The customer's contacted us this morning, he's got three small koi that are swimming. Um, he thinks they're clamped up. By clamped up, what he means is they're, they're swimming slowly, uh, mid water, and they've got one pet fin pulled in tight to the bodies and they're just swimming along slowly and aimlessly. So we've checked the, uh, the water parameters, the water parameters have all come back good or reasonable. Um, next step is a microscopic examination of the nuclear sample just to identify if there's any parasites present. Um, and of course if there is parasites present, then we can give the correct medication to um, knock the parasites back. Uh, it's, it, this time of year is a time of year when you are susceptible to a parasite outbreak. The temperatures are rising, the parasites are getting going the same as the koi. The koi immune system is still quite low. So this time of year, if we do find parasites and we knock them back, and it just gives the koi a chance to um, give the immune systems a build uh, so they can fight their own battles in the spring. So to do the sample, we've asked the customer to bring the uh, two small koi to the shop. The, um, the koi will remain in the boot of his car. There's no koi allowed anywhere in the shop because of our biosecurity um, procedures. So we'll go out to the shop, uh, we'll go out to the boot and we'll take a new sample uh, from the koi and we'll identify if there's any parasites using our uh, press the microscope. So what we need is, we need a good scrape card, plastic card, you will see some people using uh, slides to take the nuclear sample. We wouldn't recommend this because uh, if the fish flick while you're doing that, you could put them quite easily with the glass. So use a nice smooth plastic card for taking the nuclear sample. Gloves, always, uh, always wear your um, disposable gloves when dealing with koi just in case there's any bacteria there, you obviously don't want to leave any cuts on your hands. Uh, environments. So here's a little tip that we use for getting gloves on. We don't use powdered uh, gloves, we like to use uh, just plain gloves. So all we do is, my hands are quite large, I struggle to get them on without whipping them. Just use a bit of Envirex over the pond. and your gloves will slip on lovely without ripping. So top tip there. So there we go folks. We will um, wait for the customer to arrive and then we will go and get a sample of the Ucas from his bike. Right, so Will's come in to have a, a couple of fish scrapes this morning. We've got a clean slide, a clean slip. Always position them there on the microscope so we know where they are. I'm going to use a plastic card to get the sample. So we'll go and get a sample, Will. Mm -hmm. So the... Them. The floor. It's a good way of transporting them in that well, there's a lid there for moving them around. So the first inspection of the coil, just looking to see how they act in, they look healthy. So what have they been doing Will? Um, that one's been clamping up on its right hand side. There's um, only one, only one pack. Yeah. Um, Sankey, that's been clamping up on its left hand side. So I'm just checking the, the piercing on the coin. Bellies are nice and clean, they can't see any infection there. The fins aren't splitting. Fin splitting is usually a sign of uh, parasite activity or rough handling. Again, no infection on the belly of the cat. You want to have a sankey. Yeah, nice clean belly. They don't feel excessively mucusy. A little bit of cat pops. 
just there, but that's nothing to worry about. So to take a scrape, take the care, then a scrape from the head towards the belly, just applying enough uh, force to take the mucus. There is mucus there on the side. What I'm going to do is take a, a split of mucus from all three. So always good to scrape around the pec fins, around the gill area, around the anal fin. If you're struggling to get mucus, you can always take a bit from the head. And that's it. So we'll put them back in the car. We'll do another one on the scan. Move the mucus from the slide, we we'll just slide down onto the thumb, position it on the slide, and there's the sample from uh, three coil. Can you see that? Yeah, okay, down. We again, this is just my method and the way that we do our mucus sample. So, just chopping the sample up a little bit. It's wet enough, if it's a little bit dry then you would use a drop of the pond water just to do that. Put the slit, the slip on and just gently press. That's our sample ready to go. Simply with the microscope, there's four uh, optics on there. We always start with the smallest one, so this is 10 times. We're going to be uh, four times, so we're going to be looking at 40 times magnification. So, what the water parameters like, look, spot on. Spot on. We, did have a, we did have an issue with the KH a few weeks ago. Spot on at yeah. seven for, for four weeks now. Yeah, so KH is um, at seven, which is good. We've managed to bring that back round. That was just a simple case to rectify the change in a little bit more water yeah. per week. So looking on the slide, the fish are being clamped, are they being flashing at all? Yes. So just scanning across, looking in all the favourite spots for um, Firstly, I'm looking for white spot, which is the last power site. Uh, Trichodina, flukes, um, you'll spot the ball at this magnification. Because I know where I'm looking, I can also spot costume at this uh, magnification. So just moving all the way across the slide, I can see parasites there. So we're taking a small sample from three koi and we have uh, two flukes. So flukes this time of the year, quite often witness outbreaks of flukes. There's two skin flukes there, I can tell the skin flukes, so I'm just going to hand it over now to Will so we can have a look. You want to have a look in there, you'll see one nestled in the mucus. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, I'll show you the other one. So, gill flutes have four dots at the end of the body, it's very uh, distinctive, and they are much smaller than um, skin flutes. With skin flutes, you can quite often see the small developing fluke inside the adult. That one there is a very young skin fluke because I can't see a um, small fluke inside. Oh yeah, you can see it moving, can't you? Yeah. 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 So two flukes, what we'll do is now we'll go through some uh, treatment options with you. Um, our, our fluke um, 
solution of choice this time of year is either classic quintal base, so it's flute pea, um, or lamex. And we find that both then put up stay in the water column longer, so yeah, we'll go through them too often. Hope you found that useful. If anybody else needs a scrape doing, please telephone us first so that we can make sure uh, the microscope and everything is ready for you. Um, the, the scrapes are free service um, for our customers. So, yeah, if you've got any concerns, then please please get in touch. So one of the other things that can um, make fish flash and flick is um, nitrate concentration. We would always expect to see nitrite in the water at this time of the year because you're increasing the feed and that, um, that filter action is going to take a little bit while and a little bit of temperature to, to fully boost up. So nitrite, um, it's acceptable in small doses as long as it doesn't linger around too long then we, we just go with it. But the, uh, I've just got a, a 5 mil sample from the bottle of fish and we're just going to check it for nitrate to see if that is possibly the cause of the flashing. So, dead simple test, five drops of region in. Give it a shake. That will take five minutes to develop any colour. So we'll just let that rest for five minutes and then we'll come back and see if there's any nitrate in the water. Right, so we've just done the nitrate test in the uh, Unwills water. Lo and behold, we've uh, left it five minutes and there is a trace of nitrate in the water. That's going to look over that. That is around the uh, 0.5 to 1 milligram per litre mark. Fully expected at this time of the year. I'm not surprised or shocked at all to see that nitrate in. What we'll do is we'll keep an eye on that over the next two or three weeks and hopefully it'll start reducing. Uh, we're going to keep the feeding levels the same. Again, it's really important to show you this because where you've got fish flashing and flicking um, in the pond, the scrapes are coming back without any parasites. Nine times out of ten, it's this nitrite that is uh, upsetting them and making them flash. So always check your uh, water parameters before you come for a scrape.